Hi right, everyone, I'm Clarence. And I'm Ji Hang. So we're actually from the NUS Astronomical Society. So this semester, we'll actually be posting some videos on basic astronomy. Our first video, we'll actually talk about constellations and culture. So Ji Hang, what are constellations? Hmm. hmm, a constellation. Yeah, actually a constellation is a specific area of the celestial sphere. In other words, a defined area on the sky. Well, today there are 88 official constellations on the night sky, according to the International Astronomical Union (IAU). Well, Clarence, do you know if stars that you observe in the night sky do they move? Well, yes, actually they do. They do move. So on Earth, we actually can see stars moving throughout the night, but they actually remain in the same positions because the stars are actually very, very far away. Hence, the stars will always stay in the same relative positions in tasks where she can create the idea of a constellation. So right here, we'll just perhaps accelerate time using this software, Stellarium. So you can see they actually move in a fixed pattern together. Mm. So if we were to actually observe a part of the sky at the same hour every day throughout the year, we can actually see that constellations shift slowly from the place they were every day. So due to the revolution of the Earth around the Sun, stars will actually appear to rise 4 minutes earlier every day. So we're going to demonstrate this by changing the date. Okay, we'll open this window. So we'll just focus on formal hot here. It's going to change the jump day. So you can see that just by fixing the same time and changing the day itself, formal hot actually goes lower and lower, changes its position. Okay. So over the several months, we actually observe different constellations in the night sky as a result of this. So Ji Hang, who actually created all these constellations? Ah, that I think I read before. Mm, but we have now explained that why people in the past decided to name these uh, constellations. Well, because back in the olden times, when there was no electricity, it was very dark at night, and people ended up gazing at the night sky and tried to associate the patterns of the stars that they found with something familiar to them. So, if we were to actually trace back in time, most of the modern constellations that we know today were created by a Greek astronomer called Ptolemy. Oh, Ptolemy as in the guy named, af uh, named after for the Ptolemy cluster? Yes, exactly. It was named after him. Let's see. Okay, so perhaps you would like to highlight some of the constellations that we can see tonight in the night sky. Huh. Well, let's try something on the northern night sky. Okay, the northern well, night sky. Where is the northern night sky? Okay. Okay, that's fine. Okay, turn on this. Okay, so we have east, then we have north. Okay, so north. Let's turn on that. Okay, so what's in the north? Ah, in the north, you will observe three rather bright stars. Now, we move to the one that is named Vega. Okay. Now, Vega, Vega. is in the constellation known as Lyra. Okay. which is actually a hub and then you to further to the right on the eastern side of the sky you realize there will be a bright and a bright star known as the nap which is the a constellation okay. of Cygnus, a swan and then further up to the nearer to the zenith or like the top of the sky you observe another bright star Altair in the constellation of Aquila well Aquila is actually a bird a, a eagle an eagle well actually if you are able to turn on the uh, okay. The the constellation art you realize that uh, the stars in a, sort of make up a pattern of these uh, objects or animal. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. I see. So I'm not seeing things, but the nap seems like it's at the end of the signals. Is like the butt. Yes, you are right. Actually, uh, the nap actually refers to the butt. The nap, the butt. Ah, uh, I see. Okay, okay. So. What's so special about these three stars actually? Uh, actually these three stars together form something what we call as the Summer Triangle. As the name suggests, Summer Triangle means that these three stars will appear during a period of summer and hence Summer Triangle. Oh, I and, see. Mm, so that's why it's a as these three stars is a, a sign for the approach of summer. And oh, yeah. I see, I see. 
Okay, perhaps we would like to move on to a different constellation. Let's look at Scorpius. How about Scorpius? Yeah, somewhere nearer to the southern part of the sky. Okay, right now. Uh, Scorpius, Scorpius, Scorpius. Okay, Scorpius seems a bit low here. Maybe we'll just bring up time a bit. Turn back time. Bring Scorpius back up. Okay, we'll stop time here. Okay, so we have Scorpius here. So, mm. how we identify Scorpius perhaps is from the J shape. So, how do we do that? Mm. We will first identify the bright red star called Antares, which is also known as the heart of Scorpius. Mm -hmm. So, from here, we can actually draw a very nice J shape following these constellation lines here already, which ends at the sting. So, I have this thing called the J, Scorpius. Then, we have the claws of Scorpius. So basically, we have Scorpius here. Oh. Okay. Then further on, we actually notice something else in the vicinity of Scorpius. We have Saturn. So Saturn, the planet, is actually currently found in the constellation of Scorp uh, Scorpius. Means to say that it's actually within the area drawn uh, boundary that's drawn up. That surrounds uh, the constellation itself. Okay. Maybe let's move on to another constellation. How about? Somewhere near Scorpius. Somewhere near Scorpius. Let's talk about. Ah, I like this. Really. Let's talk about Sagittarius. Okay. Mm. So maybe we'll turn off this and this uh, constellation lines first. Okay. So when it comes to Scorpio, uh, to Sagittarius, we will talk, have to talk about this asterism, this shape, the teapot. So let's draw out the teapot. Okay, teapot. So we start from the lid, perhaps. We go down to the handle. Three stars, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so a total of eight of them. So this makes the teapot. And then as the saying goes, the the teapot spouts steam. And then for us we'll actually find that's where we'll actually find the uh, Milky Way which is the galaxy that the solar system is currently in, our solar system is in. So if we remove these notations, then we're going to turn off the atmosphere, remove the ground. Okay, we actually can see this bright region here against the background. That's what uh, Milky Way looks like roughly. Yes. Right. So I think that's the end for our session to our video today. So hope you have learned something new. Uh, let's do a short recap. We talked about Antar uh, we talk about Scorpius, we talk about uh, Sagittarius, we also talk about the three uh, three constellations that make up the summer triangle. So hopefully you recall them and then look up the next sky now and then to look up for them. Alright? Yeah, that's yeah. all. You'll be fine. Alright, goodbye.